Hey YouTube, this is Ace Pinkter. I'm going to talk about the FL Studio EQs. Now there's four of them in FL Studio. I'm only going to talk about two of them here. This is the Fruity Parametric EQ2 on bottom and the EQUO on top. Now of the other two, you also have a Parametric EQ. Uh, the first version of this uh, works in exactly the same way as the Parametric EQ number two. It gives you different frequency bands. You can move them about through the spectrum and you can change their bandwidth. Same exact function as the EQ number two. However, it gives you no visual feedback. And we need visual feedback for this tutorial. So I'm gonna show you how to listen to your music and use the EQ, the EQ as your, uh, well, as your cues. And that's a lot of uh, silly letters there to say, but anyway. Let's listen to this track right here. Now this is only the bass of a certain track. Uh, what we're doing here is an equalizer has two functions. Uh, the first is to shape your sound. And uh, the best way to do this is with white noise since white noise actually gives you all of the frequencies theoretically. Now we can see in the EQ0 or EQUO, we can see that it produces a slope um, very similar to this sort of a shape, and it's mirrored here in the parametric EQ, but it doesn't use um, height, it uses color depth. So you'll see that it kind of has this even distribution of pink and purple, and you can't really tell the spikes, but if I move around these, these little uh, levers, probably hurt your ears but you can see from the spectrum here the color will indicate the volume of a given frequency and if I move a if I move these about through the frequency spectrum you hear different frequencies of white noise come out So all of these swishy effects that you hear in modern music is usually the result of either a filter sweep or an EQ sweep. They sound like this. Now, um, I've got a lot of latency on my audio settings right now, so it might sound a bit jerky, but try it on your own. It sounds really neat. But white noise is not what we're going for. That's just an example. In both of these equalizers, the arrangement is from the low frequencies on the left to the high frequencies on the top. So, if we listen to a bass track, you'll see that it, it tends to occupy the lower frequencies, just like this. The louder it is, the higher it is, or the brighter it is down below. So not a lot of mystery there. When we listen to the whole song, uh, things become much more complex. Instead of just seeing one instrument, we see a huge arrangement of different, um, different pieces all sort of in competition with each other. And it sounds like this. Now the EQUO has this feature called Analyze. The idea of Analyze is it's going to sort of counterbalance your frequency spectrum to provide an even distribution of volume throughout the entire frequency spectrum. It doesn't always work, but let's listen to what it does. Here we go. So what this is telling me essentially is that my song is a bit too quiet in the treble and just a little bit too loud around the 60 to say 300 hertz uh, area. That's why it's cut those bands for me and it's boosted my treble. It's trying to provide a, a true equalization so that every frequency band is equal in volume to all the other frequency bands. Now we don't always want that and depending on the type of music that you're creating you may want something to be real heavy in the bass, you may want to have really distinct high uh, treble, you might want voices to come through in the mid-range so your curve can be you know uh, an infinite different number of shapes here. Um, again, let's, let's, let's listen to another track here. We'll listen to, say, this uh, little string. Now, 
I don't see a lot of action here in this in this area, but the basic curve is something like this. So I know that this track right here, this is my uh, insert number four, is providing a sound which is shaped somewhat like this, uh, like that, right? So what this tells me is that if I listen to my song. <laughs> I can tell that this particular area is not quite as loud as the rest. It just doesn't show up in the EQ, right? So what that tells me is I need to boost the volume on that track. Now I might have been able to do it simply by raising a spike right about this area, but I think um, if you do that, you're gonna you're gonna include a lot of noise from other instruments that are nearby in the same frequency spectrum. You're gonna boost the drums as well. Everything is gonna get sort of uh, included in that range. But what we're doing here is we're using the equalizer to tell us what needs to change about our music. If I get huge spikes in the bass, I might not want to cut out um, my bass instrument, but maybe the kick drum is a bit too loud. And when I see these enormous spikes that shoot all the way up, then I'll know, hey, I gotta come over here find my kick drum and cut it a little bit, maybe a lot. And you can do this in real time and the EQ will give you the feedback that you need to tell you when enough is enough. So um, these are the basics of how to EQ your mix to sort of provide you with that um, really solid full sound that I know you're trying to achieve. The parametric EQ down here uh, does provide you with the same, the same features, the same options. But it's not as it's not quite as precise because here with the EQ UO I can isolate individual frequency bands if I want to. And I probably don't want to. That's it doesn't sound very good. But not on the master track. If I was doing this on one of my inserts, it might uh, it might work out. Now I use equalizers pretty heavily. We'll see that if I if I look through here, uh, there's an EQ on track two. I've got some slight EQing going on in the default parametric zone right here. I have some EQing going on on track 4, I have some EQing going on on track 5, track 6 has a slight bulge right there in the 5 kilohertz region, and this one has a little moving frequency band which gives it a bit of a variation using a peak controller for timing. So um, each one of these tracks is sort of engineered to fill the sound. Now I like to have at least one EQ um, I'm using two right now just for the demonstration purposes, but I like to have an EQ on my master track. And even if I don't use it, even if I don't actually come in here and make huge sweeping changes to my mix, I can still use it for the visual feedback. It's going to tell me if something's too loud, it's going to tell me how well balanced my sound is. Now, if I listened to my sound, this would be the last thing I see here. If I listen to my sound and I can tell that something's missing, like there's just, there's just nothing... I can see there's nothing in this area. That tells me, hey, I need to add an instrument somewhere. Maybe just a pad, maybe just uh, some synth, maybe just some delayed um, mouth noises. I don't know what, you know, uh, this is where it, it's entirely up to you. But it's telling me that it needs to, it needs something to fill out this region right here. I need a boost. And so rather than just shaping my EQ to fill it in or to boost the volume of whatever isn't there, um, I can add a track and sort of isolate it to this region using another EQ or using the built-in frequency band settings right here. That should do it. A curve just like that would probably um, take any instrument that I put on it and make it occupy that zone pretty well. Um, I know this was pretty brief and I didn't give a whole lot of examples here, but um, that's all I got. This is the basics of EQing in FL Studio and the overall generalities of EQing to achieve a full and rich sound. A Spinkter, signing off.